one question that may have popped into your mind is, well, what makes a molecule chiral? And I've certainly mentioned it a couple of times. The key is um, that the molecule itself uh, has no plane of symmetry. And so that is that should be our axiom for chirality, that a molecule's chiral if there's no plane of symmetry. Now, what does this mean in terms of the logistics? Does it mean that you need to have um, a stereogenic carbon, right, with four substituents coming off of it? We've already seen that uh, just because you have a, a stereogenic carbons in a molecule doesn't necessarily mean you have a chiral molecule. If there's a plane of symmetry, then um, the molecule's achiral, and we call that a meso compound. But are there conditions in which a molecule doesn't even have a stereogenic carbon, and yet it is chiral? And the a simple answer to that is yes, um, there are examples. Are there a lot of them? Not necessarily. It certainly has to do with the shape of the molecule, um, but there are some of them. And I'm going to point out uh, one type of, uh, of molecule in which that is the case, and these are called allenes. So allenes are, uh, are dienes, they're alkenes, in which the two double bonds are shared on one carbon. And so let's take a look at uh, this particular structure right here. You see that the double bonds, you know, the two double bonds are on the same carbon. This is 2,3-pentadiene, um, 2,3-pentadiene. And if you think about the shape of 2,3-pentadiene, the shape is not planar, right? We know that... Um, alkenes are planar, and certainly uh, there are regions of planarity in this molecule, but the entire molecule itself is not planar. Everything is not in the plane of the board. If you think about the reason for this, it has to do with the, um, the hybridization of that central carbon. That hybridization is sp hybridized. And when we look back to alkynes, when we talked about um, alkynes in which we have sp hybridized carbons, we saw that there are two p orbitals, that uh, two pi bonds formed from two p orbitals that are perpendicular to one another. So when we draw that particular um, structure out, if I think about the formation of an allene, that carbon, um, you know, double bond, both of those double bonds, well, one double bond is going to be in the plane of the board, and then the other double bond is going to be perpendicular to the original double bond, right? It has to be that way because that central carbon's sp hybridized. So its p orbital has to be perpendicular to the first p orbital. Now, what does that mean in terms of the orientation of the substituents? Well, on the carbon on the left-hand side, if the p orbital is in the plane, then the methyl group and the hydrogen have to be going, coming out at me or behind me. So I'm going to um, show an example here where the methyl group's coming out at me and the hydrogen is going back. Now, if I think about the substituents coming off of the carbon on the right, they actually have to be in the plane of the board. And so notice I'm just using normal lines to represent those bonds are in the plane of the board. So I'm drawing the methyl group um, up and the hydrogen down. All right, so this is the picture of an allene. It's not planar. It actually has the, the two R groups are 90 degrees from one another. And if I drew out that structure without all the pi um, orbitals, I can draw it just like this. Now, Think about the mirror image of this. If I drew the mirror image of this molecule, I get something that looks like this, right? Do you see that it's a mirror image? Methyl group's coming up, the hydrogen's coming down, and then on the other side, the methyl group's coming out at me, the hydrogen's going back, so it is a mirror image of one another. And if I took that molecule and I tried to superimpose it, on the molecule on the left, I would see that they are non-superimposable. 
What does this mean? It means that these two molecules must be enantiomers. So there's no stereogenic carbon on this allene, but it exists in one of two stereoisomers, and they are enantiomers of one another because they are mirror images of one another. So this is one example of a molecule that's chiral but doesn't have a stereogenic carbon.